Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Crossover Deep Dive. Today, I am here with the lovely Ella Roberts. Ella, thank you so much for talking to me. Oh, thank you so much for, uh, for having me. I have been listening to your beautiful voice. It's so ethereal and kind of like otherworldly. So it's lovely to, to see you uh, as the person <laughs> behind the voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So can I ask you, Ella, I think I just assumed when I first heard your voice, maybe that Celtic is what you'd always done. But I think like a lot of the artists we talk to, your background is actually in classical. So can yes. you tell us about that beginning for you in the classical yeah, music sure. side? Um, so when I was uh, about six, I started um, uh, classically training and um, had a beautiful teacher. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of just, you know, I, I was very focused on getting all the technical um, technical things right and, and making sure that my, my voice was, you know, being properly used. And um, I think my teacher was very old fashioned and any other style that was not classical was bad for your voice. <laughs> so yeah. I think that was you know, very much like, okay, classical is the only way. Um, and, and yeah, she absolutely beautiful teacher. And um, yeah, so I, I sang classically, I performed classically, I, I did all the, um, you know, the Stedfords and the competitions and, um, you know, big performances in classical. And although I loved singing and I, I, I enjoyed classical, it sort of, I wasn't hugely passionate about it. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually wasn't until um, well, I, I had seen Riverdance when I was five and um, I absolutely fell in love with the music, but I never thought that that was something that I could sing. So um, it wasn't until very much, much later that um, I kind of was like, oh, that's like that music does something to me. Maybe I could try and sing it. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's sort of where I was deviated from the, the classical route and, uh, yeah, went down the Celtic path. So it's really the emotional connection to the music. So what kind of things were you doing in your repertoire just so we can get an understanding of your voice, where it was and where it went to? Like, were you yes, your soprano? Of, yes, yes, soprano. Um, I did a lot of uh, Italian um, operas and um, I actually even wrote my own opera when I was <laughs> in, my, oh, wow. in my teens and uh, we performed it at the local conservatorium. And, That's super cool. Uh, that was, yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, so yeah, I... I yeah, I think in terms of um, getting my voice set up for being able to sing what I loved, it was so important to me because I thought, you well, at least I'm doing it right. You know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not going to strain my voice or, um, yeah. So I think, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for my, my classical upbringing. It was so important to me. And what were some of the things that you changed when you moved from classical? Because obviously you kept all the breathing, all of that's the same. But what are some of the things um, that you were able to do when you started doing Celtic music? Oh, um, I think it was it was very much um, just finding my way. Like placement was different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, I, th I think finding that that placement. And I think with with classical, a lot of it was you know, projecting and yes, um, Celtic, it's very soft. It's very, um, it's very breathy. Um, and trying to find the balance, I, I, I initially found it quite difficult because I was like, where does my voice sit? Because, you know, can I sing this style? Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of kind of trial and error and, and lots of fumbling. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think, I think for me, I just – Apart from, you know, like the muscles required because they're, they're always required, I think it was just sort of settling into the emotion and mm -hmm. just letting the emotion kind of take my voice where it, where it felt like it needed to go. Um, but yeah, a lot of it was just trial and error. <laughs> I feel you. I'm, I'm trying to, I feel like I'm on a similar journey trying to find my voice here. So it's interesting yeah. to hear what you've done. But can I ask you, going back to the music, because that's obviously what brought you to this, what were some of the first songs that you were trying, the Celtic songs? Oh, hmm. Um, well, I think I'd always sung the songs, um, like the Skyboat song and the Bonnie Banks of Loch Lomond. They were um, mm -hmm. big in my family. My my nana, my great-grandmother, she um, she was uh, she's got Scottish ancestry and she loved those songs and 
when she uh, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and her memory started to go, um, those were the songs that kind of brought her back to us for a time. And so we would sit there and get a bit emotional. <laughs> we would sit there and we would sing these songs together. Um, and so they they meant a lot to me. So they were always the songs that I would I would sing anyway. And then I think when when I knew that that's what I wanted to do, um, I was like, okay, well, I have to I have to go with these songs um, because because they mean so much to me. And when you started doing Celtic, were you performing right away, or did you start with the YouTube channel? Because I know you have a massively successful YouTube channel. So how did you first put that music out? Yeah, um, I, I was actually really shocked um, at how that all went because I had no idea um, that the amount of people that it would reach. I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to sort of sing because I'm passionate about it. And, um, yeah, I, I started the, the – well, I did my first lot of recordings and I thought I'll just upload one and see how I go. And I sort of – had this mantra of like, right, every year I'm going to record an original and a traditional Celtic song and I will do a video and upload one a year. And, um, yeah, I think I was after the first sort of six months and it sort of started to, to trend and I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's strange. And I just sort of <laughs> kept going after that and I was, yeah, still, uh, still shocked. Um, but I think, I think Outlander had – had recently come out as well and I'd done the Skyboat song. Um, we have a family connection to Flora McDonald who's mentioned in the song and so I, I thought oh, that wow. was, um, you know, a good song to do for me and um, I think YouTube was like, oh, Outlander, Skyboat song, here, and then kind of just started promoting it and um, yeah. it sort of just took off and, yeah, I was com – and then I think I think I, I started after that going – oh, okay, maybe I should start performing again because I'd had a really big break um, from performing. And I was doing Irish dance at the time, so I was sort of kind of, yeah, I, a break from from singing, I guess. I was still kind of performing in other ways. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, so I started doing the Celtic festivals after that and they were like, where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> well, classical. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, there had been such a, a big period of time where I wasn't performing so it was kind of yeah I did start with the videos and then I was like right well like this is what I'm passionate about I need to sort of get out there again um with my voice and yeah so so slowly slowly started getting back into performing and um yeah then, right well, I'll release the next one again and um it was the same thing it was the the one song that my great-grandmother really connected with and she just passed and so I I felt like that was the one that I I needed to do for her and I was lucky enough to have my grandmother which was her daughter in the video playing my older self oh, wow. <laughs> and so it was a really really beautiful kind of family project um and I like absolutely gobsmacked with the amount of people it resonated with and like that one kind of just took off and I'm still shocked if I look at the numbers and I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> um, so. Celtic music does seem to have quite a universal appeal, right? Because I feel like here, anytime it's, you know, we're, we're all pretending to be Irish, even though we're not in the state. Um, so can you tell us, you know, like, what do you think is some of the appeal? Is it that it's the songs or, you know, the folk songs, they're talking about love and things that are quite, you know, everyone experiences? Or what is it that draws us to this music? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, a lot of, lot, well, my ancestors who were forced to leave their home, forced to leave yeah. Ireland and Scotland, and I think, you know, a lot of the songs are about that longing for home. And um, I know as a little girl I didn't really know much about my ancestry, but I had this connection to, after I saw Riverdance, I had this connection to that music. And so I would listen to the likes of Anya and Lorena McKennett and um, all these artists that sing these songs and I felt this pull to to Ireland and to Scotland and I was like oh that's weird like I'm Australian <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah like sort of eventually found so many other people that felt the same way that have mm. ancestry and they've got this same 
pull to to this place that maybe they haven't been to before. And, and I know that, you know, like for me, it wasn't until I landed. In, I I went to Ireland first, and I when the plane landed and I stepped off the off the plane, I felt like I had come home, and it was mm. the strangest feeling ever. But I was like, yeah, I think I think the songs are about a longing you know, for loved ones and for home and a lot of them were, were forced to leave. So I don't know if that carries down through the blood. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing how many people across the world feel the same way. And, you know, yeah, I, I just, there must be something to it and I can't explain it. But, yeah, it's this, this sort of feeling deep inside of this connection to these old songs that, you know, a song about my ancestors or, yeah. It's, um, but I know a lot of these songs, you know, if I, I listen to them even, I will tear up and yeah. instantly feel this this connection and um, sadness, a lot of sadness. But, um, yeah, a lot of hope too, I think, a lot of these songs, um, a lot of hope for, for new beginnings as well. But definitely that longing for home and as a little girl, I always felt that strange longing, like Australia was not where I was meant to be. That sort of, I knew that when I was little and um, same when I went to Scotland, I, I uh, my favourite place in the whole world, um, Glencoe, and I found out after I'd been there that my my aunts, my Scottish ancestors were from there. And oh, wow. I, when I stepped off the tour bus, um, I again had this feeling of oh, come home and I was like, that's so weird. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people feel the same way and I think that's what connects everybody, this sort of same longing. That makes sense to me because we all want to belong to something, right? So that that physical thing that you can really point to, that's beautiful and, and probably, again, like you said, the magic of Celtic music. Yeah. Um, can I ask you, going back to performing, though, so, you know, having been classically trained and now going to these festivals, performing in a new way. It must have been very vulnerable. What was it like seeing the different kinds of audiences' reactions? Ah, uh, it's, um, it's yeah, it's still very daunting, I must admit. Um, I think I, I had a, a bit of an imposter syndrome when I, when I started because I was like, well, I haven't been doing this since I was five, so already I feel like <laughs> coming in late. I was yeah. 20, maybe 25, I think, when I sort of, fully dove into it um and I'd done Irish dancing on and off throughout the years but the sort of the singing side of things I did feel very much like oh. <laughs> um and especially like the, the the Celtic festivals I sort of um the very first one that I did I was like I'll oh, just apply for this festival you know, you never know um and they were like yeah yeah onto the big stage and I was like oh okay <laughs> and uh you know I had this massive band go on before me called Murphy's Pigs and they're a 12 piece band and they're absolutely outstanding. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, like they've won all these awards and um, they're just incredible, incredible performers. And um, yeah, it was a big feeling of imposter syndrome because I was like, oh gosh, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, who am I? Um, so yeah, and I, I think. I remember my first set and I was I was singing and a lot of the songs are quite sad and sorrowful and you know love and longing and um a lot of ballads like I love the ballads because they're the ones that I really connect with and um you know and the the audience like are very and I was like oh gosh am I boring them am I sending them just like, like oh what the, yes, am I doing this wrong and um and then the applause um afterwards and the smiles and the tears and I was I was like oh oh, okay, they don't hate me. <laughs> and, um, yeah, like the, the amount of people that came up and just said, you you know, you hit a spot or, um, you know, my, my grandmother used to sing that song and a lot of these sort of comments that I was just not expecting, um, especially when, like, you're performing and everyone's just so, like, uh, and someone said, you went into a bit of a trance. And I was like, oh, okay. That's what it was. Thank goodness, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So that, I think that my first year, I entered um, the uh, the awards. Went to the awards night, and um, I won all these awards. And I was just yeah. hadn't I hadn't prepared a speech because I was like, "There's no way 
I'm going to win anything. You know, I'm just lucky to be here. Um, and they kept calling my name up and I, I kept going on stage and going, oh, um, what do I say? I'm terrible with words. And so just being put on the spot, I was kind of like, oh, what am I saying? I think I gave the most <laughs> awkward speech of my life. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so definitely like um, definitely an imposter syndrome kind of vibe going on. Um, you know, just being surrounded by incredible artists that have been doing it for such a long time and like this sort of where did you come from? <laughs> um, yeah. But it's clearly in your soul and I think getting those awards obviously means so much to an artist. So you won, I think it was Artist of the Year in Australia. Yeah. Um, like, what does that feel? Once you, obviously you said at the moment, it's hard to process, but afterwards being able to look back and see that journey and, you know, get this recognition. Yeah, I mean, I'm still in shock. I think every time something like that happens, I just sort of sit there going like, who, me? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, especially because... I love the music so much, you know, and I, I do it because it's Im very emotional to me, you know, and um, I think when when people turn around and you know, say things or, like, the awards, I, like, there's a lot of disbelief, I think, and I, I sit there and pinch myself and be like, did that really happen? Am I dreaming? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of that that goes on, and I think... Um, yeah, like my brother, who's uh, I often drag him along to my performances and like play, play for me. <laughs> um, and, you know, and I'm off. I'm like sitting there going, "How oh, really?" Like, and he's like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> so he's my biggest supporter. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm grateful. I'm grateful for my brother Nick. Um, but yeah, like uh, I'll often we'll often sit there chatting, and I'll be like, "I just don't understand." <laughs> you know, like, like my voice. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, often disbelief, um, shock, and um, and I'm just so humbled, I guess, mostly, like, that people feel connected. I think that was especially um, when I started receiving emails from my videos. Um, mm. That was just some of them had me in tears because they're so beautiful and, you know, just to think that some, someone's been so affected by something that I've done, you know, I think that's always very humbling and very emotional. I, I love hearing people's stories and um, you know, the connection that they have as well to the music and to the videos. So I think that's, yeah, it's it's something that I can never quite um, get my head around. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing better than that, right? And your voice is just so beautiful, Ella. So thank you for sharing it with us, first of all. <laughs> Um, and I'm curious now, you know, you, you talked about at the time you were performing with these new people, but you've performed at things like for PBS, right, with Jim Janis, and some of the ladies from Celtic Women were a part of that special. So what's that now like? Do, have you gained a little more confidence going into the room? And what's it like collaborating with those people? Yeah, I, mean, I must admit that that experience was just amazing because they'd been my idols. Um, Mary had been my idol since I was six I think it was and I saw her on um, Lord of the Dance so I was always a massive fan of hers and I, I definitely fangirled when I first met her oh yeah like, oh. <laughs> same with that Lynn Hillary she was one of my favorite voices I, I absolutely fell in love with so her voice. pure yep. so oh, gosh and um I think it was Riverdance when I first heard her or maybe Celtic Women but I just remember thinking how am I performing with these these beautiful ladies that, you know, I have idolised, um, you know, that imposter syndrome was definitely like, eh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I recently ran into them um, in Ireland and it was just, yeah, it was so good to, to see them again. And, um, yes, yeah, so I think I've definitely, uh, I've definitely calmed down now. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I, I often still have to pinch myself and, and be like, I can't believe I'm, in amongst these beautiful, incredible artists that I still look up to. So, Yeah, you were recently at, I want to say it was Celtic World Music Forum, is that right? Yes, yeah, an absolute incredible three days. Wow, just wow. And, and being in a room full of people that felt the same, like a lot of, so many people came from all over the world and everyone had this same longing, um, for this connection to to Irish music and culture, and mm. it was just incredible. And the stories of of the artists that um, 
because they had panels um, and they gave talks on you know, the instruments and the, the history and, um, and all the songs and then they performed a little bit as well. And uh, it was just incredible to, to hear their stories and, um, you know, and I guess as an artist, um, hearing that they go, they go through the same things that I go through, like the, the imposter syndrome and the, yeah. you know, the nerves and the, um, yeah, like that was just incredible to, to be, and I think everyone in the room felt you know, the shivers and the the emotion. Um, I I highly recommend that event. If um, yeah, I think it's on again next year, so definitely go if you can. Because my God, <laughs> yeah, the clips looked amazing, and it must feel so good to be part of that community. Um, can you tell us, Ella? You know, you've sing these beautiful songs, but you also write songs that have a lot of that same emotion and these qualities that we love. So, is there something specific when you're writing Celtic music? You know, is it some intervals or time signatures? Is there anything that helps to capture that mood? Um, I think so. Funnily enough, I think the first time I, I was actually able to write, um, probably my first ever bit of music, um, I was in Scotland. And I think before going to Scotland, I'd always struggled to write. I would like try and, you know, write out the lyrics and I'd get two lines and I'd be like, oh, no, that's terrible. <laughs> um, and yeah, I was in, I was in this beautiful place in Glencoe and I was just sitting there and I was, it just sort of hit me like a wave. And I, I just sat there and I just started writing and I think what shocked me was not only was their lyrics, but there was music and I could hear it. In my head and I was like oh watch this has never happened before and I just sort of kept writing and I, I feel wow. like that was the the catalyst and after that um you know I think thinking back to that place and and a lot of the places that I traveled to um yeah it, it kind of unlocked something and so I think but but mostly when I'm writing I'll just be doing some mundane task and then all of a sudden a song will just hit me in the face and uh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there's a song. I have to write this down. I have to like sing into my phone and record it. <laughs> um, and yeah, it just sort of comes in a wave and then it's gone again. And I'm like, well, I'll see you next time. <laughs> I love though that you were so inspired by being there, physically being there. Um, I think that's something people love from your videos is the, the beautiful landscapes. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the songs you released, where you've recorded them? Um, I'm sure it's an amazing experience to put those together. Yeah, I think one of my favorite ones was Shularun and we filmed it up in the Wicklow Mountains in Ireland and it was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, it was maybe late October or early November um, and I was wearing this green dress, beautiful dress, and uh, we're up on the top of the mountains and, um, you know, they had the drone out and the cameraman was standing there and I was like, <laughs> I think my nose was red and my hands were red. I was just like, okay, be warm, be warm, be warm. <laughs> but I think just being able to, to be up there in those mountains and singing that song, it was just... It was so incredible. Like the, the, um, yeah. I honestly, words can't describe how how amazing it was to be there. Um, and yeah, I, I did, I did get sick afterwards. I think I, I got a little bit. Um, oh, plus maybe a bit of pneumonia. Um, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> whoops. Um, but I think I've always done videos when uh, it's been ridiculous weather. I think the one we did in um in Maine with Tim Janice and Rain and and then in the Harp Twins, it was. I think it was minus three something <gasps> and we were standing um uh, on the shore and uh yeah we we're all just standing there shivering and it was like and action okay and relax <laughs> <laughs> so, but like i feel like the best places are, are worth it like it, it's worth getting wet or cold or um yeah like it's just worth being there so and you'll remember it forever <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> like, can you tell us about, so your first album was released, um, it's called Celtic Dreams. Uh, tell us about some of the music you included in that collection. Yeah, so that was actually funny. It was after COVID or during COVID, actually. Um, and I was living in Ireland uh, when COVID hit and I was just about to tour um, Germany with a group called Highland Saga. And um, then they started shutting 
borders and everyone's like oh oh no what, what do we do and um yeah. and my family was like better come back to Australia because we don't know how long this is going to go on for and so I think having to leave Ireland um like I felt this it was it was a very hard time to sort of leave this place that I felt like I belonged um and I guess I sort of thought back to my ancestors and what they might have been feeling when they had were forced to leave and um and I remember just sitting there thinking oh my gosh is this is it is this it for music now like the the world had shut down and um you know I was lost for a bit and I was sitting there and I was I was doing this random course because I thought well what else do I do (laughs) um and I was studying and then all of a sudden uh this song just hit me in the face and I was like oh I need to do this and then but I'll, I'll have a break and I'll, I'll go and make some dinner and I was in the cooking in the in the kitchen cooking and then another song hit me and I was like this never happens it's like it's one a year <laughs> and they just kept just kept coming and I was um you know just shocked I guess mostly um yeah and I I I think there was just this this Celtic theme you know and it was sort of like the Celtic myths and legends and I don't know where it came from, but it just was like, this is another song and this is another song and this is another song. Um, and then I I fell pregnant and um, I was writing these songs and I was like, I feel like I need to write um, a lullaby. Like the, mm-hmm. then it kind of, that kind of crept into it as well. And so there was this sort of combination of of lullabies and, and Celtic myths and legends. And um, yeah, and then when we were recording, um, we sort of had to record the first half um, via Zoom because of um, border closures. Yeah. And uh, so that was, that was an interesting process. Um, <laughs> but when I went down um, to, to sing um, and I was a bit further along, um, I actually uh, felt a kick. Um, oh. And it was actually the song that I had written for my son. And so that was just oh, um, beautiful. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> amazing. Uh, experience I guess and um yeah when he was born and um there were a few few songs that he liked but that one especially he would just like just just stop and just kind of zone out and I was like oh (laughs) (laughs) yeah so that again another beautiful memory that's gonna stay with you and that's uh, just a lovely lovely album so you know it's available to stream um (laughs) And the new song you have is Can't Help Falling in Love, which it's not Celtic, but I think, again, you're talking about universal themes about love. So tell us, you know, why you chose that piece. Yeah. So um, actually, surprisingly, um, when my son was a newborn and, um, uh, you know, nothing would settle him, Elvis, actually, it came on the my Spotify, I think, and... Um, and I'd listened to Elvis a couple of times. I think we'd seen the Elvis movie when I was nine months pregnant or something. And I don't know what it was, but something about Elvis and he would just stop crying and he would just either fall asleep or just be content. And um, and I was like, oh, Elvis, okay. And uh, <laughs> you know, they would like certain bagpipe music. He would just stop and listen. And I was like, good boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there was uh, Can't Help Falling In Love with, uh, with one of his was one of his favorites and I think when I was in the studio and I, I randomly was like I, I just feel like I need to do this song <laughs> um, and so we recorded it and um, and then I think it might have even been nearly a year later when we were doing the video and, and I was sort of thinking of the story for it and um, I, I called up my brother and I was I was like, do you want to be in my music video? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, what do I have to do? I'm like, just, you know, get married. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, he's got his beautiful girlfriend with him in the video. And, um, yeah, it was, I, again, they're always family affairs, but um, it was extra special because uh, it was just before we moved to Canada. So I think I had my mum and my dad playing the older version of them at the end of the video and um, all my brothers were in the video and um, my husband and so it was it was really nice to sort of just you know it was a song about love and my whole family was in it so it was yeah really special and then my my son will um I was editing the video and he would just come in and be like 
can't have fallen in love. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> watch it. <laughs> Put it on and then, um, where is it? Like maybe a couple of months later, he'd just be walking around singing it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, extra special. Well, Ella, it's been such a treat to talk to you. You are so genuine. And like I said, your your voice is so beautiful. So thank you oh, for thank making you. music. Um, and everyone, please join us again next time. And we'll have more information on the screen about Ella's music soon. Um, till then, thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs>